Um, yeah, so um, I'm back here. We were actually interrupted a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, my memory was actually full. That's it. So since we got more time now than before, I can actually come back and do the same explanation here first before choosing then either one of those um, and solving the actual exercise. So. Um, so here in the zero system, if we choose this formulation here, this is still a zero system. We will put on it the external load. And we will basically have the following deformation. Okay, and what's important here is um, what have we removed uh, uh, exactly? We've removed a moment. We can put it here and call it x1. It's x1 equal to zero. That's the zero system. That's why. And we're gonna compute the angle here. Delta one zero. In this case, it's not a displacement, but it's a rotation. The rotation at the position one so here at the node goes um, in the positive direction x1 i mean it's positive it is actually rotating in the direction of x1 if it's rotating in the other direction so if it's rotating in this case counterclockwise it's going to be negative so um rotation at position one positive in the direction of x1 caused by the external load the zero here um, Moving to the unit system. We're going to have as load x1 equal to 1. It's going to cause a rotation of the beam like this. And this is going to be delta 1, 1. Rotation at position 1, positive in the direction of x1, goes by the moment x1. I want to say force, but it's the moment here. Okay. And what's the compatibility? The compatibility um, is saying the following, um, that the rotation that's actually occurring at this position is zero in the real system. In the real system there, we cannot have any rotation. The slope here should be zero. So v prime the slope of the um, deflection v is the deflection the slope of the deflection um, is zero when you um, at the climb support so it's first really like constant linear before actually before any deflection can occur so this angle should be zero at the very beginning so Delta 1, 1, deflection caused by the unit load, unit moment 1 times x1, that's the actual rotation caused in system 1, plus the rotation that's going to be caused in system 0 or because of the um, external load, um, that's delta 1, 0, should be 0. And we're going to find out that in this case, uh, x1 should actually be um, negative we're going to find out that the deflection that should happen the moment here x1 should be in the other direction so that the deflection will be upward and both angles will cancel each other out and you get zero but people don't have to make the right assumption from the very beginning they just need to make the right calculation the right steps and the answer is going to come from alone the x1 is going to come with the right value so in both cases, x1 is going to be calculated in this way this is going to be the same, it's going to be the same formula for both of them. I can rewrite it here for case 2, um, possibility 2, but come on, it's the same. Doesn't matter if you use this system or that one. It's exactly the same for 1 and 2. It's the same formula, but not the same values, like obviously those systems are different. So, moving to actually solving the... Um, the exercise, okay, now I don't even know which one to choose. I personally don't really care. Let's take this one then. Or we can actually do both. So we put the external load here. Um, 
yeah really quickly um getting tired a little bit here the moment distribution will look like this with the value who s square half how do you get it you should know uh, basically some of women around this point like i don't want to go into detail that's m0 because it's caused by the external load or because the x1 force is zero here yeah. now we take the same system and we apply the x1 force we got something like this with the value one times l then we need to compute the deformation delta one zero by coupling those two systems and then um we got tables to do that when you're coupling this triangle with this parabola here where the shear force i mean the slope here is actually zero um it's like one fourth but i need to show you guys how they look like mm. let's take our favorite engineering book in germany schneider Bartabel. We get in the static and move. Yeah, somewhere there we should have integral tables, blah blah blah. Integral tafel here at So time here to uh, yeah, the vicious is not so they look like this. You have a specific form, a rectangle, for example, that you need to couple with a triangle. And it's like the moment of one and the moment of the other. I mean, the value, this is a specific value. You need to take into account this value times that value divided by two. Oh, it might be triangle and triangle is one third. I mean, when the left sides are both, I mean, when the biggest sides are both on the same side both left for example both right and if they have different position for example here mi is on the left and there mk is on the right then it's one six um yeah you got formula like this so those are the tables that you need that's how they look like you can also have trapezoidal forms like something like this coupled with a rectangle a triangle that or the triangle trapeze with trapeze um blah 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 and some crazy stuff and what we had a moment ago was this and that triangle and like i said one four um yeah so you need to have those or put it on some what whatever like sh paper sheet 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 whatever or form example um so it's one for the factor we're looking for we need the factor we need this value of the moment one times l that value of the moment ql squared half the length of the element l and now you see this moment it's downwards it's a positive moment actually and that moment is upwards a negative moment so they have different signs so the whole thing here is negative and like i even said here from the very beginning that value should be negative we could have seen it already um so that's like q l l is the same l so don't get confused l to the power of four divided by eight e i m is one over e i that's why i forgot two um, that delta is actually the following integral. It's integral of m of the null system of the zero system and l m of the the one the unit system divided by e i dx. So it's actually an integral that needs to be calculated. Like yeah, and then those tables are just quick ways to to calculate those form those um, integrals when the form of the functions are known. Um, that's that's why we got those tables but basically that's this integral is what needs to be calculated so this is the value we get a uh, negative and now the delta one one is like we need to couple this triangle with itself um triangle and triangle like we saw before in the book is one third 
the factor e i the moment here once and l times the moment on the other triangle was the same is was the same so for instance l again actually I could have just written squared times the length of the element that's l again so many l's um that's l to the power of three divided by e i it's positive because both are on the same side delta one one is always positive that's also what i meant here you can also see why they're always going to be positive because you're always coupling like a moment with itself since you're coupling it with itself both of them are always going to be on the same side because both of them are the same so the value is always going to be positive another reason why it's always going to be positive um more a practical reason um, like in the calculations and stuff and x1 is nothing else than minus delta 1 0 divided by delta 1 1 that means q l to the power of 4 divided by 8 e i times 3 e i divided by l to the power of 3 l to the power of 3 is gone e i is gone and we got 3 f q l that's the value of x1 um so with that we basically done the force we were looking for here is 3 f q l we know that the constant distributed load there is q the resultant from that is q times l so here we have 3 f q l what's missing is 5 f q l here in the vertical direction we can just put it this uh, we can just put the 3 fql in this formula here we're gonna have an um, av sql minus 3 sql is 5 q um, 5 fql the horizontal force is zero we found that out already the moment is let's compute the moment um we can do it with superposition we got a value here sql um square half and we got another value here it's one times l when x1 is so if x1 is equal to one but x1 got a value that we know and it's three fql so i can multiply this value times square so actually the moment he um the moment here is zero in all cases because it's zero okay yes what we call superposition let me write it down the total moment is m0 plus x1 times m1 so here we got 0 plus x time x1 times 0 is 0 here we got a value of we need to consider the different positions so let's call the other the above one is a negative value let's see it doesn't even matter if it's negative or positive you just need to to know what is above and what is below for you and, and give sign to that let's say above is minus so minus square square half that's the m0 m0 plus x1 that's 3 f q l that's x1 times the m1 value is 1 times l and it's below so now it's positive for me so it's actually a plus there 1 times L. So what I got is minus squared square half plus 3 F squared square. Uh, minus a half, that's actually um, 4 F plus 3 F, that's minus 1 F Q S square. So the value of the moment at this point is minus one if q l squared. Okay, and how does it look like? It's a sum of both of those. So we got the minus here, we got the zero there, and we got this thing. Um, okay, how do I know that it actually goes down here and it's not staying up? It got to, um, something to do with the shear force distribution. We know that we got 3 here and 5 there. So we got something like that. 
so we should actually have a change in the slope of the moment so first it's like going down because of this negative value here and the positive here in this positive one we got a negative value that's like minus one if square square it's becoming bigger because q here is nothing else than the derivative of the moment so if q is positive the moment is increasing 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 up to the moment when q is zero and then the moment starts decreasing okay that's why we got that change if for the moment to stay above here we should only have an increase all the way we cannot like have an an increase here and then a decrease decrease meaning we go back to the negative and still come to minus without going below this curve that's how you know it and all those values of course we can check them in here um, which I'm not gonna do because they're correct like three a five eight and one if they like okay let's just do that um static and okay. here's what we've been calculating um it's a little bit flipped but it's still the same the a support got three fql that's what we had there the b support got 5 fql that's what we got there the moment is minus 1 fql minus 1 fql meaning that the um, tension side is actually above um, i haven't really explained stuff about that but the mk is like minus hql okay everything is correct there um, Okay, in 10 minutes, we can quickly try to do it with the other system. It's gonna be a little bit messy. Let's do it quickly here. The moment distribution for this is gonna be that with QL square if you guys know this. Um, the moment distribution here is gonna be this. This system, that's the M1, that's the m0 this system coupled with itself so that the one one is one if the value here is one times one times the length so uh, three e i here delta one zero this one coupled with this one is one third the factor e i the value the if the one times l Oh, no 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 it's this is this one is directly a moment so no it's not l to the power of three it's just one times one times the length so only l um and this one is by like square square and then the one this one is directly a moment so it's not one times l like before here one times l was because one is a force and then to have the moment i need force times lever arm and the lever arm here is l long so 1 times L is the value of the moment here, it's 1 times L. But in this case, the 1 here is comes directly from a moment. X1 is already a moment, it's not a false in this case. X1 here is a moment, and 1 is already the value of a moment. Okay, QL um, squared if times 1 times the length, the length is L. So we got here QL to the power of 3 divided by 24 EI and the compatibility is the same x1 times theta 1 1 plus theta 1 0 should be 0 i already explained what it means the deflection there should actually be zero and not the deflection the slope of deflection there should be zero so x1 is minus theta 1 0 divided by theta 1 1 x1 is square to the power of 3 24 ei times 3 ei divided by l l is gone we only have l square remaining there ei is gone 3 divided by 24 is if we got q l squared if one if of q l squared that's the value of x1 that's the value of 
Ah, I forgot the minus. Ooh, I forgot the minus. Um, minus. Cool L square F. That's the value of our moment. Okay, and it matches with what we have had before. So in this case, what I compute is the value of the moment, and in the other case, what I calculate is the value of the support force. But it doesn't matter if both of those we can still um, compute the rest. Like when I got the moment already, it means I know I know the following. I don't know the force here yet. I don't know the force here yet, but I know the moment already, and it's minus one eighth cool squared and with that moment that's known I can put it in here and I compute BV we can try that here if I put in here the value of the moment it means minus minus 1 eighth cool S squared plus BV times L minus cool square half equals 0 um, this one and um, that's one if positive minus four if that's three if so three if two l square and negative plus bvl equals zero i send this to the other side i divide by l bv equal three if l as expected and then we can, when we have BV, we can calculate AV like we did before. Just put it in here. It's going to be QL minus BV. So QL minus 3 F Q, QL is 5 F QL. And that's it. So we actually calculate this system with the two only possible um, static system. Um, and yeah, I wish we see that they, they actually... Um, they, the match okay so we did everything right here um it looks a little bit messy so looking back on what we did the force method is one of the methods that we can use when the system is actually indeterminate how do we determine that we got two formulas an easy one and a more tricky one that most of the case not even necessary is but Teachers, I think they like this. I don't know actually what they like. It's not like they are correcting. Someone is correcting uh, copies anyway. So, um, yeah, and watch out for closed system when you're using the first one. When you're using the second one, watch out for restraints and stuff. Even when you're using the first one, watch out for the number of um, hinges that are actually present. And every hinge got two reaction forces. So, watch out for that too. Um, then you got your system it's actually indeterminate meaning you got too many reaction forces at least more reaction forces than equations that you uh, that are available so you need more information about um, displacement and stuff you get your null system zero system um, that's supposed to be a statically determinate system out of the system that you had not out of the blue and on that system you put the external load first that's what we call zero system and you calculate like um, moment distribution, shear force distribution, normal forces. Why have we not done the shear force distribution and the normal force distribution? Um, I should have said it. I assume here that EA, that the actual rigidity is infinite. So I don't need, so no deformation is going to occur because of um, forces in the length direction. That's an assumption I made. Um, and why have we not calculated um, shear forces is because um, um, in the displacement caused by shear forces are very small in compared to the displacement caused by bending moment when the elements are long, when you got long slender element like, yeah. Shear forces displacement will be more relevant for element that's quite compact like consoles just like that. So they're quite robust, something short like this. Let's say this is L, L, for example, and yeah, something pretty short. But when we got an L like this and a H that's like quite small in comparison to L then um, 
the displacement caused by shear force is quite irrelevant. Um, there's also the stuff about Bernoulli theory, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't want to go into those details. And that's why we haven't considered the shear forces. But basically, um, the whole displacement that occurs when I'm calculating a delta 1, 0 is actually the integration of m1 times m0 divided by ei dx plus the integration from the shear forces to um, okay, shear forces in English speaking country, actually call them if we like Caesar, shear forces divided by J A. We can write here A S or we can write kappa A S is because um, this factor, this kappa here, is not the curvature. Um, it's considering like um, we call it effective A here for um, now yeah, how do we actually call it exactly the shear a here ratio shear ratio something like that for rectangle um for rectangular cross section got the value five six so we we basically okay it got it had something to do with the fact that the shear force distribution actually something like this is it's zero there at the extremity and got the maximum value in the middle of three half maximum shear forces divided by a here and it's not just something constant and um, to make an, an equivalent or a correction for this assumption compared to the actual um, distribution we use that factor in five six for rectangular cross section basically the only value i know um there are others of course i just don't know them um yeah but for us like when the length is like really small in comparison to the height now, when the length is really big in comparison to the other dimensions of the element, just the deformation coming from shear forces are neglig neglectable, negligible, and we don't take them into consideration. And what is, is to be taken into consideration are deformation coming from normal forces divided by Ea. But here I assume that Ea is infinite. So the denominator here is going to be so big that the whole integral is just going to go to zero. That's why it's not here. Other stuff that need to be considered for the deformation are um, effects from springs, effect from temperature, and stuff like that. Those are other elements that need to get in there. Um, yeah, so how, how do they look like for temperature? What was it again? Epsilon T times N one times L and okay actually it needs to be integrated to the X zero it needs to be integrated and then in case of curvature epsilon M times M one the moment times the X where epsilon T is nothing else than alpha T the coefficient of thermal expansion times the middle the mean value of the temperature difference so something like temperature above of the beam minus temperature below of the beam divided by two oh i need to check it is this above minus below or is it below minus above um i don't know here is the mean value so it's a plus Ooh, i'm safe but i cannot escape this now here i need to give the real value for that um it's what is it what is it is it zero okay here's how we're gonna find out a positive moment is a moment that looks like this when the tension side is below so right now i'm wondering if it's t um, temperature above minus temperature below or temperature below minus temperature above but we're gonna find out the positive moment is a moment with the temperature with the tension side below okay and if i want to have the same thing with temperature i need to have a higher temperature below than than above okay and a positive moment should then be given with temperature below Minus temperature above, yeah. Is temperature below? Is T unten minus T oben? That is like, oh, unten actually, so it's below. 
and all this open view above. Maybe I should write it like this below and above divided by h yo um yeah that's it i actually said more than i wanted here that's the force method that's how you do it um yeah maybe in another video i will just calculate some examples maybe from some of no yeah i will just do some stuff um yeah so thank you for listening and have fun